Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Paul Pribonow, the president of Augsburg University, and it's my wonderful pleasure to welcome you to this beautiful building, to this remarkable expression of Augsburg's identity, to this celebration of this transformative project. This is an event we've all eagerly anticipated, a day that has been years in the making, an occasion that's been brought about by hard work, dedicated action, and generous support from students, faculty, alumni, parents, friends, and our Board of Regents. More than anything, what brings us here today is our belief, our belief stronger than ever, it seems, these past few years, that this day would arrive and we would come together to celebrate and say thank you. I'm honored to be with you here today. I want to say just a couple quick words before I introduce some special guests. First of all, you know, I had a picked of science bow tie this morning. Um, so if you get close enough, you'll see I've got the periodic table. I know nothing about chemistry, but I've got a good bow tie. Um, <laughs> The second thing I want to point your attention to, uh, I'm sure many of you have noted the, uh, the fritting on the glass above us, but uh, my wife Abigail and I were very pleased to commission the artwork that's on the, um, on the glass here, and that is uh, Martin Luther's handwritten version of A Mighty Fortress is Our God, overlaid with the cell structure of an American elm tree. Science and religion at play right there in the glass all around us. And one faculty member suggested that I take a laser pointer and have us actually start singing A Mighty Fortress. Um, <laughs> We're not going to do that, but uh, just so you might uh, note it as you go around the building. I want to welcome some special guests who are with us. First of all, Augsburg's ninth president, Bill Frame, and who's here with his wife, Ann. Bill, I saw Bill uh, over there, so Bill. Current members of the Augsburg Board of Regents, our Regents Emeriti, especially our former board chairs who are here with us today, Dr. Paul Mueller, Jody Harpstead, and Ted Grindall. I also want to welcome Mike and Ann Good. Mike, is, uh, you'll hear, hear from later, led Augsburg through the end of the campaign that made this uh, amazing project possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Norm and Vanjie Hagfors and their families and special guests who are right down here in the front whose uh, name graces this building and made this all possible for us. Members of the Augsburg faculty who moved mountains to create a vision for this facility and actually moved mountains of books, equipment, and everything else into this building over their Christmas break. Just a reminder that half of Augsburg faculty now resides in this building. Half of the faculty. Um, and I want to give a special shout out to Professor of Physics Stu Anderson, who's right there looking at me because uh, we have been uh, joined at the hip on this project to make a reality. And I also want to thank our partners in creating this magnificent space. Uh, first, Bake Baker and Tim McGuff from McGuff Construction. Uh, I saw them here, their wave in the back. I uh, also want to thank Tom Oslin from Oslin Associates and his colleagues, and Bill Blansky, the architect for the building, and everyone from HGA Architects. Can we please thank all of them for this magnificent facility? I want to just uh, offer one quick word before I introduce uh, uh, some of our special guests who are leaders of our city and county. Um, this project started uh, with a commitment that we would, in fact, uh, dedicate a certain amount of the spend of this building to locally owned, especially minority and female owned businesses. And we set a bar for 10% of our $75 million budget to, in fact, live out that commitment. I am proud to say that we did north of 15% of the on, on local businesses supporting the local economy. And we owe our thanks to our folks from McGuff in particular who really helped us to identify, including a female-owned business in the neighborhood that did all the glass in this building, three and a half million dollars worth of glass, and we have a lot of glass. So uh, that is a, a wonderful tribute to them. Three special guests that are with us, each who would like to offer a few words of appreciation. First, I'm very excited to introduce to the Augsburg community Minneapolis's new mayor, Jacob Fry. Mayor Fry was elected to lead this city after having served uh, the third ward and the city council since 2013. He attended the College of William & Mary and then completed a law degree at Villanova, which led him to Minneapolis to work as an attorney. We welcome you, Mayor Fry, and we are so happy to have you here for this grand opening. Follow his, following his remarks, we will hear from uh, Commissioner Peter McLaughlin, uh, the Hennepin County Commissioner for this part of the county. Uh, Peter has just been a wonderful partner in so many ways, not only on this project, but in our work in this neighborhood and thinking about how we could work together across our public-private uh, boundaries in order to really ensure the strongest and healthiest and safest 
Buddhist community. And then following his remarks, um, City Councilman Abdi Warsami, who actually doesn't represent Augsburg because the boundary of his ward is right here on 20th Avenue, but he lives right across the street. Um, <laughs> So he has not only been an advocate for this project and wonderful partner in the work we do here in Cedar Riverside, but he's our neighbor, and he had a front row seat on this construction, and I'm sure he's happy it's over. Uh, so, um, so I'm now going to introduce uh, Mayor Fry. I'll be followed by, uh, by Peter and by Abdi. Mayor Fry. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you to the Augsburg community at large. You know, as you mentioned, I did not have the privilege of attending Augsburg University myself, so I'm not quite so lucky. Uh, but my head policy aide at the city of Minneapolis is an Augsburg graduate, and she is sending both of her two sons to Augsburg as well. So we're continuing a tradition of excellence here. And the, the Hagford Centers here is really is, is just emblematic of everything that Minneapolis is about, you know, from, from science uh, to religion to business to engagement with the community. You know, I've, I've heard before kind of the overarching mission of Augsburg is not just education, but is binding and being one with the community. And that is an absolutely critical centerpiece for this university and also our city at large. Uh, and, and I'm just so excited about the work that can ultimately take place here, and it jives so well with everything we're working on the, at the city. Uh, you know, my administration will be focused on three core tasks. Uh, the first is gonna be affordable housing, and we do have an affordable housing crisis right now, and we believe that everybody has the right to live in a great city, and yes, we do believe that housing is a right. The second is economic inclusion and making sure that as we grow, we grow equitably, and the fact that you are incorporating 10% of all contracts, uh, actually 15%, excuse me, 15% of all contracts to minority, to, to women, uh, and to uh, locally owned businesses is a really important step in the right direction because when we have extraordinary edifices just like this, we wanna make sure that everybody is gaining, uh, is, is gaining from it, and you most certainly are doing that every single day. Uh, so, you know, I'm so proud uh, to be your mayor. I'm so proud to be working with you hand in hand. Uh, we have some extraordinary work ahead, uh, but this, this right here is such an excellent start. So thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Well, I, I am... Absolutely thrilled to be here in this uh, spectacular building. Uh, the real thing we celebrate here, though, today is the role that formerly Augsburg College, now Augsburg University, I've, I've seen it in both, both uh, positions, as a part of the community. This, this college, this university, has gone beyond traditional town-gown relations, way beyond that, to be an integral part of reaching out and making sure that each and every person who lives in this community is, has an opportunity to live and prosper through the, the, the long-term outreach in the American Indian community uh, to the new outreach that has been so successful in the East African community. This is the, this is, this shows the, the Christian commitment, uh, loving thy neighbor as thyself, it, it is embodied in the work of Augsburg University. Uh, I can't say enough about uh, President Pribinow and his, his work, uh, and, and we should celebrate his leadership. I would say, though, that it's, it's brave to do the, the piece of art, to commission that piece of art. I remember on the, uh, the Hiawatha, or the uh, Green Line, there was, a, there was a formula, a math formula, at one of the stops. And I remember Phyllis Kahn, whose husband was a mathematician, said, you better check that formula to make sure it's right, because the mathematicians will be doing that. So. <laughs> So I'm sure this is correct, and it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know about the, tree, the, the genetic background of the tree, I can't, I can't tell that, but uh, th this is a, a grand celebration, and it's, it's a part of the tradition of, of uh, Augsburg University that I am proud to support. Uh, we, we try to work together as the public sector with this great uh, university, and we will continue to do so, and I'm just delighted to be here today with all of you, with the Augsburg family, to celebrate this great contribution. The physical edifice is magnificent, 
but the, the connection to community is the, is the, true, the true commitment that is uh, embodied here today. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Council Member Abdi Warsami, and uh, just like Paul said, I'm a, I'm a neighbor uh, to this building. And I, I have a story to tell of uh, two family members of mine, both of them named Salma. And the word Salma in Arabic means peace. And the oldest Salma, she's uh, going to go to university next year or college next year. And she wants to go to Augsburg because she wants to become a physiotherapist, and this is her first choice. The second Selma is my daughter, who is two years old, and who was born, I think, a week before construction started. <laughs> and, and she's looking forward to having, uh, you know, to sleep throughout the night. Uh, so that's, that's my story with regards to Augsburg College and the connections that I have and my community has with this fine institution. The other connection that I want to talk about is the leadership of President Paul Premonor, who as the head of Augsburg has played a key role in the Cedar Riverside Partnership, which is an entity that works to bring everybody together in the Cedar Riverside neighborhood. And I would like to give a round of applause to Paul for the hard work he has done for that. Thank you very much. Um, I'm glad that the work is over, and I'm glad to be in this fine building, and I look forward to many more years of connection and building and fostering strong connections with Augsburg College and the Augsburg community. So thank you very much, and have a wonderful day. Thank you, friends. Uh, we definitely look forward to the work that we will be able to do in the years ahead. Today is about working together to make the world a better place. Without each and every one of you, we would not have arrived at this day for the grand opening for this innovative and transformative Norman and Evangeline Hegford Center for Science, Business, and Religion, a living demonstration of the college's commitment to interdisciplinary student learning, urban placemaking, and thoughtful stewardship. Augsburg University has made significant strides in these commitments and more during the past 10 years, and we have much good work still in front of us. This effort took the participation of more than 1,200 donors, many of you here today, alumni, community leaders, faculty, believers. Let me be the first today to express my gratitude and to say that you have been an essential part of this building, and you'll see your names arrayed across that donor board that's right on the windows of that classroom there. You helped the success of this campaign. You helped us reach this moment in Augsburg's history. The Hegford Center, which will promote learning across nine departments at the intersections of science, business, and religion, is a commitment to our Lutheran heritage and identity. It's also a promise to explore the intersections of academic disciplines, diverse viewpoints, rich faith traditions, learning styles, and so much more. Too often, the fields of science, business, and religion have been regarded as disinterested in or even distrustful of each other. That certainly is not true at Augsburg, as is now made so evident in their being joined in this one facility, this one center. It's a living testimony to Augsburg's commitment to the Lutheran vocation in higher education. Yes, as Lutheran Christians, we believe we are freed in Christ for a life of insatiable curiosity and called by God to serve the neighbor. Augsburg is a place that supports every student in his or her journey of vocational discernment and pursuit of careers in teaching, civic leadership, service to the church, scientific research, law, medicine, privately owned startup companies, and large corporations. The Hagford Center is both a symbol and a space, lots of space, for our deep commitments to our remarkably diverse students. In this building, housing those nine academic departments and half our faculty, we will live out what I call Augsburg's three-dimensional education. First, this is a place where we will equip students to make a living in laboratories, classrooms, faculty offices, finance labs, greenhouses, grow labs, 
In all of these places, students will learn what they need to learn to be successful in industry, small businesses, medical and dental school, graduate school. We're deeply dedicated to ensuring that our graduates get the best jobs and further education they deserve. Our faculty and staff take this commitment seriously and show us every day what it means to teach and mentor the next generation of skilled leaders and professionals. The Hagford Center offers a context for the highest quality education for all of our students so that they might, they may make a living. Second, this is a place where we will challenge students to make a life. The chapel that hangs here above us over our heads was strategically placed at the intersections of disciplines to remind us that we help students discern and follow their calls, their vocations. Yes, to jobs and professions, but also and even more so to lives of meaning and faith and purpose. In this beautiful building, surrounded by meaningful art and design, students will be, will be inspired to consider where they are called, the heart of our education in the Lutheran tradition, so that they might make a life. Finally, and perhaps most distinctively, students here at Augsburg learn to make a community, to work for justice, peace, and understanding, certainly, but even more fundamentally, to learn the skills and habits of heart to find common purpose, to build stronger organizations, to be forces for change in society that focus more on how institutions and organizations and businesses are actually stronger when they promote common work. In this remarkably fluid building, community is already being built every day. And with our open arms to the wider community that you see on the other side of the building, we are securing our commitment to Augsburg's powerful call to serve the neighbor and the neighborhood. As we prepare to cut the ribbon and formally open this building, we invite everyone to take the opportunity to embrace our values so well expressed in this building. Open inquiry, spiritual dedication, environmental stewardship, and educational impact. A three-dimensional education to make a living, a life, and community. And to see also how this is more than a building. It introduces more green space on campus. It dedicates our campus as an urban arboretum. And it includes beautiful expressions throughout the building. I hope you'll visit the, every corner of this building and find all of the public art that has been commissioned specifically for this space. The Hagford Center truly is a place that welcomes and embraces our whole community. After our luncheon, you will be able to tour this marvelous building and see for yourself uh, the excitement of faculty and students who will be arrayed throughout to talk about the research and learning across these disciplines. But now, I'd like to welcome Mike Good, class of 1971, our national campaign chair for the Hagford campaign, to share some thoughts with us. Mike. Did you ever think this day was going to come? Yeah, we did, didn't we? Well, thanks, Paul. Everything is possible for one who believes. These were the words that just spoke to me several years ago. When this campaign was sputtering, and there were many of us who were doubting whether we'd ever be able to reach our goal of raising $50 million to build the most significant academic college, academic building that this college had ever envisioned. I know the date, it was November 3rd, that I read this in my daily Bible. I don't remember the year. But as I was reading that day, November 3rd, the portion of the reading had to do with the healing of the epileptic boy. Jesus had come back and there was a crowd and he wanted to know what was going on. And a couple of his disciples said, well, this father has brought his son and we haven't been able to heal him. So Jesus talked to the father and the father said, if you can do anything, Take pity us, pity on us, and help us. And the words that jumped off the page of that Bible that I, I'm sure I'd read many times but had never spoken to me this way, Jesus' answer was, if I can. And I could just see the pause as I'm reading this. If I can, everything is possible for one who believes. And the father immediately said, 
I believe, help me to overcome my unbelief. And believe became the theme of our campaign. And we definitely believed it, and this is the result of that belief. And I thank God for this day. I thank President Pribenow for the privilege I was given to chair the campaign. I'm so grateful to the faculty, the staff, the cabinet members who supported the campaign with their time, their talents, and their treasures. Their engagement with alumni and friends who joined us on campus for the CSBR summits, and I'll bet you many of you were there, helped us tell the story that vividly demonstrated their ongoing commitment to transformational education with our students. I'm also so grateful for the students. They were the ones that told a great story. They were generous with their time in supporting their campaign, sharing their personal stories of significant research completed with faculty, or sharing their musical talents as they have today with summit guests, and by sharing how their Augsburg experience had impacted their lives, their faith, and the discovery of their own unique gifts, which was leading them to their vocation. And I'm so grateful to the many alumni and friends of the college who responded to our call of supporting the campaign in so many ways. One very special lady in this group is with us today, Jeannie Narum. And Jeannie, I'd like you to stand, please. While on staff here at Augsburg in 2001, before leaving, Jeannie made the very first gift to the Hague for Center campaign. Thank you, Jeannie, for believing in this vision and for flying back here today to be a part of this great celebration. <clears throat> All sex successful campaigns I've discovered have three key components. The first is a compelling story, a compelling vision. It's the why. And boy, we did have a why. All we need to look is a cross, and that building was built before most of our families had television in their homes. <laughs> the second was, you need to have a handful of very significant lead gifts. I'd been told that, but it became true. I'm so grateful to those who made such generous commitments to help Augsburg continue to be a light in this community and a light in the world. We had four families or individuals who made commitments totaling $30 million. Campaigns don't get completed without people like these who have been blessed and who have chosen to be a blessing unto others. I want to thank them all, and especially Norman Vanji for your lead gift today. Thirdly, every successful campaign needs the support of an army of believers. We had, as Paul mentioned, over 1,200 alumni and friends of the college, now university, contributed what they were able in amounts that ranged from $100 to over a million dollars. And those fish and loaves that were offered up added up to over $20 million dollars a miraculous achievement for sure. This was the most widely supported campaign in the history of the college, and for that, I give you all my heartfelt thanks. Because of the generosity of all of you and many more, this new Hagford Center will stand as a testimony to Augsburg's faith in the work that God has done and continues to do in the life of this university. You know, we started this campaign by asking God to help us transform this campus. And in the process, he transformed us. Our Augsburg philanthropic culture has forever been changed because we believed. No longer can this community ever say we don't have the capacity to live into our greatest and most noble dreams about the university when we, they align with our mission as a university of the church. God has taught us some great lessons in our work together, lessons of his abundance and what is possible. So in our joy today, 
Let us never allow ourselves to believe that this great accomplishment was ours alone. Instead, let us forever boldly proclaim, as a psalmist wrote, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in him and let us be grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now let's cut the ribbon, should we? I'd like to invite at this time Mayor Fry, uh, Abdi Warsami, Peter McLaughlin, President Pribinow, Provost Karen Kaivola, Norm Hagfers and Vanji, Jeff Nodlin, our current board president, the next alumni board president, Lori Higgins, student body president and vice president, B.K. Korma and Francesca Curry. Please come forward for our ceremony. as you are able. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Gracious God, we are bold to pray. Do listen to your children praying. This is the day you are making. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We give thanks to you, for you are good. Your steadfast love endures forever. We give thanks for this Norman and Evangeline Hagfors Center for Science, Business, and Religion sacred intersection. We give thanks to you for the first fruits offered freely to create this learning center. Bless all who teach and learn and discover in this space that all meet the call to love the neighbor. By your Holy Spirit, bless this structure that it might be strong enough to hold the search for meaning and purpose while being porous enough to allow our own humanity to seep through our failures and connect us to you through our own vulnerability. May the communities that cross the threshold pulsate with good deeds and shine with gentle justice and compassion. Oh, gracious God, bless our food and table conversation with love, laughter, and joy. We pray in the name of God, our Creator, Jesus, our saving grace, and the Holy Spirit, our breath of life. Amen. Amen. Lunch. <laughs> you have a-